Hey everyone, today we're talking about the new HyperX PCI Express SSD, and this is called the HyperX Predator. It is actually an M.2 SSD, and M.2 has been around for a little while. It is very common in smaller mobile devices, but it's worked its way into some desktops as well, including X99 and some high-end Z97 systems. However, M.2 is not always a usable form factor for SSDs when we're putting them into desktops, and there are a few reasons for this that we'll go into momentarily. The HyperX Predator drive, although it is an M.2 SSD, it actually uses a, a PCI Express adapter card about this big, and it's a half height, half length adapter card. And what we do is plug the M.2 SSD into that card. Uh, it ships already connected if you buy it that way, and then plug that into a PCI Express slot. So a few things about this device. Uh, in terms of specifications, the HyperX Predator SSD is using a Marvell controller, the 9293 controller. It is a dual core SSD controller. It's effectively uh, akin to a flash processor unit as LSI used to call it, but most other vendors, including Samsung and now LSI or Sandforce, and of course Marvell call it a controller. And the 9293 is a dual core unit. It is capable of four lane uh, connection via the PCI Express bus, which bypasses some of the abstraction layers faced by uh, SATA. The device is connected by eight channels, as most controllers do with the flash modules. So the eight channels go to different flash modules. Uh, Kingston is presently using the Toshiba A19 toggle NAND for its NAND uh, flash, but of course that can always change. And the A19 NAND is 64 gigabit. It is the present Toshiba generation of NAND for consumer devices, and that's what they're using here. The HyperX Predator ships in two capacities presently, 240 gigabytes and 480 gigabytes. Now, if you do the, the math on this, it's actually 512 as most 480 SSDs, as all 480 SSDs are, uh, but you lose some of the data, and you lose that to things like over-provisioning, which we've explained in the past. So the HyperX Predator ships at about a, a dollar per gig, a little bit lower, and you won't see these prices right now, but as retailers continue to sell and adopt the drive for retail, you will see that the 480 gigabyte model sells for about $470, 240 gigabyte model sells in the 200s. And all that information is available linked in the article in the description below. Please check that out for more details. So talking about device performance, that's what everyone cares about here. SSDs are both easy and hard to benchmark properly. Our SSD test methodology has been peer reviewed by Kingston, by Samsung, and a couple of other vendors by LSI and controller manufacturers. It's been peer reviewed and analyzed and they've provided feedback for us to make sure we're testing it properly. The reason it's easy is because a lot of it can be done using synthetic software. We don't have to manually run around in games like we, we do with GPU testing. It requires a lot of manual effort. With SSDs, we can run a lot of software, but the hard part is taking all of that information, which is very dense, and then stripping out the parts that are irrelevant to most users, like gamers and uh, production power users like us. And then uh, further, the challenge we face next is presenting that data in a matter which is actually comprehensible, rather than just pasting screenshots of ATTO, which is, I, I have trouble understanding that, and I look at it all day. So that's, that's the challenge we face. So some things I want to talk about before we get started here. I did an intensive study of I.O. during games. So this used HTTune to log the I.O. transactions made when games were loading and when games were playing. And this tells us how many I.O. requests were made during each game, during each sequence of the game, during loading. And then it further tells us what type of I.O. that is, what, how long the I.O. is. So uh, 4K, 16K, and so on. And then we look at the queue depth, which is another important factor. That's effectively how many files, or uh, excuse me, how many I.O. requests are lined up in sequence to be executed by the device. And in the case of gaming, we found that queue depth of one and two are very common. And after that, it sort of fades depending on what type of game you're playing, what files you're loading. In terms of I.O. length, we learned that 4K random, of course, still very important. 4K random QD1 especially. And then after that, the reads and the reads are most popular at 16K, 32K, and then the writes are at 16K and of course 4K, as I mentioned before. Uh, some of the higher 
size rights occur at 64k depending on the game and i have all of that shown in the charts on the article if you can't catch that through youtube fast enough we take all of this data and then use a mix of benchmarking software like anvil storage utilities to run tests befitting of those transactions so it's a simulation of gaming uh but it is a, a scientifically designed one the problem though is that even with a very high transaction speed we still face issues in the software bottlenecks where uh, you you hit a point of diminishing returns very rapidly and this occurs with the pci express device that we're talking about today and all other pci express devices in such a fashion that uh, once you put an ssd in a system you really don't you stop seeing any improvement beyond that to your game performance but there's a large improvement to things like uh, workload tasks so photoshop video editing and premiere or after effects and uh, other software in that effect there's better compression and then of course better file copy and transfer speeds so let's let's get to the benchmarks finally first i want to show you the pc mark performance this is a synthetic utility that executes real world traces so the developers future mark took traces of applications like photoshop premiere illustrator every adobe suite program they took traces of some games and of office and then they execute those on the SSD in a fashion that is replicable on all devices without as much test error as if it were being done manually by me. So this is why we use that. You can see the largest improvement with Photoshop transactions. So uh, Photoshop's execution time of heavy workload batches is about 4% faster than the 850 Pro when using the PCI Express drive. And you'll notice that there are no other PCI Express drives on here right now. That's because the HyperX Predator is the first one we're testing. We hope to look at Intel 750 SSD in short order, uh, but do keep in mind that all these competing devices we're showing are not necessarily actually competing. They're in different price points and they use the SATA interface. So the biggest improvement between PCIe and SATA is in Photoshop as seen here. And then we can look at file copy speeds. So this is a test called ASSSD, which uses incompressible data. That means that the data has already been compressed to a point that Windows can and the SSD can no further compress it. So technologies like Sandforce's DuraWrite uh, really don't play it too well here because they they really they have nothing to do it's already been done for them the files that are incompressible are generally mp3s uh movies like mp4s and images jpegs are are already very heavily compressed as many of you know so this is considered incompressible data in our incompressible test you can already you've seen the numbers now while i've been babbling for a minute and the fastest speed we ever saw with the HyperX pcie ssd the predator using compressible data was almost 1.4 gigabytes. That is tremendous. It's extremely fast and no SATA drive can possibly reach that speed because the SATA interface after overhead is about 550 megabytes per second before overhead is closer to 750, but you'll never see that speed uh, because there's all kinds of overhead and abstraction in the, in the transfer. Our in-house gaming test using Anvil storage utilities, which you can download for free, uh, but we've we've modified with these settings and you can also replicate these we use 67 percent incompressible data which is fairly realistic to uh, live use and you can see that the HyperX PCIe SSD does excel in many cases and some of them like 4k it's fairly similar or even surpassed uh, by the Samsung 850 Pro. Note well that as I said before this does not really reflect an in-game improvement so in our heavily modded version of Skyrim, which is very large, fast travel loading, non-cell, uh, was a difference of less than a second. So between the 850 Pro, the HyperX 3K, which is slower, the OWC drive, and the Predator, we see a disparity of less than one second between eight and nine seconds every time to load Whiterun. Uh, so you will not see a gain in gaming. However, concluding everything that we've just gone over, you will see performance gains in Photoshop's workloads at about 4% from the Samsung 850 Pro. 4% isn't a lot. If you are a production user who is using Photoshop all day, whether it's automated or not, you may want to consider something like a PCI Express drive because uh, when you're using it that much, 4% can actually be fairly uh, a fairly good result for heavy intensity workloads. And file transfers like copy, and we see a massive gain, more than two times the transfer rate more than three times the transfer rate of a lot of SATA SSDs. Um, but beyond that, 
uh, the, the performance gains are really at a point where they're unnoticeable in many core user applications. So all the speed data aside, it's also important to talk about usability. You would want a PCIe adapted M.2 SSD in the case where uh, one, your motherboard has no M.2 support, two, you're on a Z97 board where there actually is a performance disparity between M.2 and the adapted PCIe version. This is something that's been tested in-house by Kingston and other manu manufacturers, excuse me. The downsides to using PCI Express are also obvious. You consume a PCIe slot, so you've suddenly limited your SLI and Crossfire capabilities. On Haswell and Z97, Z87, whatever, there's a very limited lane availability. So you've got 16 lanes from the CPU and eight from the chipset if it's Z87 or better. And that means you've got about 24 lanes total, exactly 24 lanes. And those are divvied up between your M.2 or PCIe SSD and your uh, your video cards. So if you have an X16 video card, that's 16 lanes gone immediately. If you have another one, you're, depending on your configuration, you could be at 24 or 32 lanes. It might be a multiplexed board that allows that. Um, and then beyond that point, you really have no room for an SSD. So there will be some throttling or limitations in that regard. And in that case, you would really want an X99 board, which has upwards of 40 lanes available. So those are some of the concerns here. Uh, with solid state drives, I want to really emphasize that you need more than speed. It's very important to pay attention to endurance at this point. Uh, endurance is very difficult for us to test in a timely fashion in that it is impossible to test in a timely fashion by the nature of it. So we do run a sort of passive endurance tests in the background. If we ever find a problem, we'll update but that might be a point at which you've already purchased the device. So beyond endurance, items to consider would be things like the controller and the NAND used, which can be used as an indicator of the endurance. And this is all stuff we discussed in the article in full detail if you need help deciding if I have this combination of NAND and controller and this manufacturer, is it really going to survive in the long term? And then there's things like encryption. The 850 Pro is more affordable far more affordable than the HyperX Predator, and it's got full AES drive encryption, and it has Opal compliance and a couple of other business class features that uh, I'm not 100% sure if the Predator offers all of those, although the Predator is faster, so that's your, your disparity in pricing. So that's the full review of the HyperX Predator. I know it's pretty in-depth, but this is our first SSD review we've done a video of, so I wanna make sure everyone under understands how we test and the critical aspects of determining which SSD you should buy. Please leave a comment below if you're curious about anything. We do a lot of SSD content. I'll help you out if I can. Uh, tweeting at us is really the best thing to do, at GamersNexus on Twitter. I respond very quickly on there. And thanks for watching. I will see you all next time.